Okay, um, we've been looking at some of the properties of hyperbolic functions and in this video and in the next few videos we're going to do something different now. We want to consider how we can use hyperbolic function substitutions to solve different types of uh, integrals compared and contrasted in the past when we were using trigonometric substitutions to solve integrals. And if we have an integral of this general form here, where we have a variable squared minus a constant squared, uh, hopefully that reminds you, well, the hyperbolic tangent squared of theta, that is equal to the hyperbolic secant squared of theta minus 1. A variable squared minus a constant. Same general form as this. But now, thinking in terms of hyperbolic identities, um, hopefully that will make you think, well, but we also have the hyperbolic sine squared of x. That equals the hyperbolic cosine squared of x minus 1. Same general form, a variable squared minus a constant. And in fact, the hyperbolic secant squared of x, that's equal to the hyperbolic tangent squared of x minus 1. Same general form. Now, if we were doing this with a trig substitution, then, of course, we would use this. Um, in this video, let's try to solve this integral uh, with this substitution. So we start off by saying, uh, okay, let u equal a times the hyperbolic cosine of x. So when we do that under this square root sign, we'll get the square root of u squared, that will be a squared u squared minus a squared. And we can factor out the a squared from this and take it to the outside, that will be a. Then we're going to be left with the hyperbolic cosine squared minus 1. That's the hyperbolic sine squared. Take the square root of that. And we have this. What about, so this here, this becomes simply a times the hyperbolic sine of x in du would differentiate. du that equals a times the hyperbolic sine of x dx. So this integral here becomes du, that's this, a is a constant, take that to the outside. The hyperbolic sine of x dx divided by this, which is, take the a to the outside, the hyperbolic sine of x, that's 1, this is 1, so we have just the integral of dx, which equals x. So now we go back to our original substitution here, and we say, well, the hyperbolic cosine of x, that equals u divided by a. So x, that's going to equal the inverse hyperbolic sine of u over a. So very simply then, we have that 
original integral here it is and that's going to equal inverse cosine of u over a plus an arbitrary constant of integration and that's it that would be the end of the problem um, if this is correct then if we take the differential of this side of the equation it should give us this expression here of course the differential of that that's going to be zero and remember uh, from the previous inter um, video that the derivative or just the differential of the inverse hyperbolic cosine of u and where that is equal to 1 over square root of u squared minus 1 du. Only here now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the differential of u over a. So that's going to equal 1 over a du divided by square root of u squared over a squared minus 1. All of this under the square root sign. So this will equal 1 over a du divided by, and here we're going to have u squared minus a squared divided by a squared but here this will be in the square root sign a squared we take outside and write it as a and this will cancel this a up here so we have then that this expression here that is equal to du divided by the square root of u squared minus a squared. These a's cancel. We have a du divided by the square root of u squared minus a squared. That's what this is equal to. And this is what was in the integral sign. So when we took the differential of this side, it did give us what was inside the integral, showing that yes, this is in fact the correct answer. Now what we want to do, um, and we probably won't have time in this video, in the next video what we'll do is look at the same problem, only we'll use this substitution instead. Uh, obviously that should give us a different expression. When we obtain that expression, let's see if it's equivalent to this expression here. So come back, join us in the next video, we'll solve this integral with this substitution and see if that answer is equivalent to this answer here.